Adam Taxon with Rabbi David Bendori, who is the Rabbinical Director of Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership. Uh, we are talking, obviously, about the Colorado Massacre that took place on Friday, and our topic uh, related to that is uh, Rabbi Bendori's thoughts regarding one person in particular who's tried to exploit it, uh, a real enemy of the Second Amendment, New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Uh, Rabbi, welcome, and why don't you take us through the two newsworthy events involving um, Bloomberg since Friday morning and the horrible events then? Sure. Well, let's start with uh, Bloomberg's comments on Friday uh, on the John Gambling Show with Mayor Mike. Uh, Bloomberg's comment, he said, and I'm going to give an exact quote here, you know, soothing words are nice, but maybe it's time that the two people who want to be president of the United States stand up and tell us what they're going to do about it, because this is obviously a problem across the country. So that's quote number one. Now, there are so many things wrong with this quote, I don't even know where to begin. But for starters, this is obviously a problem across the country. So far as I can tell, this was a problem of one lunatic in one town. Now, maybe Mayor Mike knows something that the rest of us aren't reading about in the news, but that seems to be one specific event. And what he's asserting here is that in response to this one one specific event that we should have a mass disarmament across the entire country. Or in other words, all the law-abiding citizens in the country should pay for the crimes of one individual. Yeah, Rabbi, the horrific crimes. Yeah, Rabbi, you know, it's ironic that he would take that example because he's the mayor of New York, which is very different from very suburban Aurora, Colorado. Yet there's this plague of murders, mostly black people killing black people, in Chicago, which is a city that's much more comparable to New York, yet he's been silent about that and Rahm Emanuel's uh, running of the city, yet he uses this to exploit it. Uh, what's going on with that? Well, you know, there's always a racist element to gun control because, of course, gun control is about control. It's not about the gun, so I think that's piece number one. I think piece number two is, of course, we all have an emotional reaction to an event of this magnitude that went on in Aurora, Colorado, and Bloomberg is just trying to play off of those emotions in order to score political points, in order to gather power to his position that he represents. You know, this is obscene for him to be doing for so many reasons, among the fact that this man is a Jew, and as a Jew he should know better. He should know that putting all of the, the firearms in the hands of the state, have the, the state with an exclusive monopoly on firearms, is one of the steps toward genocide that has been used not only against the Jewish people, but against millions of other people during the 20th century. And yet he doesn't care about that history. He's not interested in that. He's more interested in aggregating power to the state that he represents. Yeah, and uh, I... And that I gave you the follow-up question before we got into his statement on Sunday, uh, which was about the police. Can you go over that and your response to it as well? So his statement on Sunday, he made the suggestion that the police should, all over the country, should go on strike uh, until new gun control laws are passed. Now, what's wonderful about this statement is that it just belies the evil nature of gun control. That. The, the very idea that the police, who he says are going to protect us, should go on strike until we get new gun control laws that are going to be used to disarm us, it just belies the complete lack of authenticity to his position. That we need to be responsible for ourselves. As we saw in Colorado, the police are not able to be everywhere all the time. In fact, by the time the police arrived, the shooting was over. The shooter was back at his car, which is where they found him and arrested him. He wasn't firing anymore. He didn't stop shooting because the police came and saved the day and rescued everyone. He stopped shooting because he decided he had committed enough evil for the time being. So he went back to his car where the police found him. And that shows you why it's so important for a citizen, for a civilian, to be able to defend him or herself, that we are on the front line for a crime like this. The police are not. We are the first responders. Yeah. So Bloomberg is proposing to make more first responders by having the police go on strike. Now, he quickly backtracked. They backpedaled from that statement when it was uh, it was portrayed in, in the news everywhere how absurd it was. So he backpedaled from that. But that the statement tells you what his thinking is about. Yeah, and you know, it's ironic that he didn't mention another event three, four months ago in Aurora, Colorado, and uh, I know you have an opinion about that, so why don't you tell the audience, because the media didn't cover it either, what I'm talking about. Right, the media is not, hasn't been covering this one. So there have been two shootings in Aurora, Colorado over the last few months. Uh, on April 22nd of this 
year, just just a couple of months back, three months back, a convicted felon just out of jail. He went to a church in Aurora, Colorado, and he shot and killed a member of the congregation and was preparing to perpetrate a crime like the crime we just saw. But what happened? There was an armed congregant in the congregation who took out his concealed handgun that he was discreetly carrying, shot back at uh, this convicted felon, and killed him. And that was the end of the crime. Um, what a contrast between that church and the victim disarmament zone at the movie theater, which, by the way, you won't find in the media too much to talk about it, but the movie theater was a declared gun-free zone. They had a gun-free policy, no weapons allowed. Somehow that doesn't stop a deranged murderer, but nonetheless they have the science and the policy. Unfortunately, that does often stop a law-abiding citizen who is a concealed carry permit holder from carrying in the movie theater because law-abiding citizens will respect laws and rules like that, whereas the people we need to be concerned about will not. My understanding is that the, my understanding is that the state of Colorado not only had that, there was not only that, but the state of Colorado has a uh, law against murder, uh, and apparently uh, Mr. Holmes violated that as well. It didn't stop him. Yes, apparently uh, he wasn't concerned about the law regarding murder. By the way, that is not just the state of Colorado, that is also federal, and I will add... Yes, I'm aware. ...crime to, to, to have firearms in your possession with the intention of committing a felony. So he was, he had stepped off the line all over the place here. Um, and uh, a little sign in the theater saying that if they listen to disarmament zone, obviously it's not going to provide any further deterrence. And, and finally, there was an incident similar to the one in April that you mentioned in Aurora. Fortunately, no one got killed a few weeks ago in Florida. Um, and a 71-year-old stopped a the murder there. Again, Michael Bloomberg isn't too interested. Big media isn't too interested there. But why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened? And before you do that, let me encourage people to find it on YouTube. I don't, I don't know the exact title off the top of my head, but it shouldn't be too hard to find. Yeah, that was last Friday on July 13th. Um, two would-be robbers came into an internet cafe in Florida. There was a 71-year-old uh, concealed weapons permit holder, Samuel Williams, there. Uh, when these two armed robbers came in, uh, this uh, gray-haired old man uh, popped out of his seat in the internet cafe and fired back at them, and that was the end of that crime. Uh, you can actually find that video. It's all over the web, um, and uh, it's actually quite stunning to watch, uh, and it just emphasizes the point I made earlier about civilians being on the front line. Civilians are the first line of defense. Uh, p police arrive afterwards because they simply can't be everywhere to protect all of us all the time. Well, any final thoughts on, uh, I know we're going to talk about a number of things in the next few days related to the Colorado uh, massacre, but any thoughts about Michael Bloomberg in particular that I didn't, that you didn't address yet? Uh, the only comment I would emphasize, and, I, and you've heard me say it before, is he is a Jew. He should simply know better. He should know better than to rely on others. He should know that we need to be responsible for ourselves. And we need to be prepared to protect ourselves. Unfortunately, we're not all Michael Bloomberg with uh, government-provided armed security guards surrounding us 24 hours a day. And I remind people who are listening that if you want to find out more about Rabbi Bendori, or uh, Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, you should go to jpfo.org or check out uh, the new Jews for, Preservation, for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership page on Facebook, which is getting a lot of interest, uh, especially over the last few days. Uh, Rabbi Bendori, thanks as always for your time.